all right so it's basically all about mentoring you people how do you excel as an accountant outside and i was saying i've been in this industry for so long over 20 plus years i've seen it all i've seen people come to this industry at the end of the day they make it big time within a short span of time these guys are earning a million shillings a month yes not for being politicians but just working as an accountant, especially in multinational organizations. Yes. And then, of course, we shall be having, we have had, I know many, many people who come into this profession, and at the end of the day, they come out of it with nothing, with nothing, nothing, nothing to talk home about. So then what differentiates between these two groups of people, these two groups of accountants, accountants who are doing exceedingly well, and then we have got other accountants in this case here who are really not making it at all. You get even somebody has done BCom accounting, BCom finance, he has a CPAK, even an MBA in accounting. But at the end of the day, this person is not even doing a job that is related with these accounts. So then what really is the difference between these two cadres of our accountants? I'll be able to share some document with you here. It will be basically a discussion. Eh? It will be a discussion. And if you feel that you've got uh, something to contribute, please put up your hand and then I'll be able to unmute you so that you can contribute to this great meeting that we have here, this great team that we have here. Great. You know, I've always gotten questions here. You get somebody in this case, he has only done ATD, KATC. KATC, and this guy is working for UNDP. Another one is doing a PhD in finance without a job, or if he has a job, these are the kind of jobs that we call meaningless, right? Where somebody has to walk all the way from Madare, Madare area four. They walk all the way to industrial area on foot, not because they want to keep fit, but because they don't have bus fare, what kind of a job is that? And yet you have got a lot of uh, knowledge about double entry, debit, credit, journals. You can produce financial statements. So what is it that we are not getting it right? Great. So let me get this document here. Great. It will be a very brief meeting, very brief, very brief meeting. And uh, I will basically have everything anchored in this wheel. This is the wheel that I would want to demonstrate to you. So are you able to see my wheel, ladies and gentlemen, here? Are you able to see my wheel here? Are you able to see my wheel here? Please talk to me. Very important wheel. Very important wheel. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, this wheel talks about everything that you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, as accountants, for you to excel. Right? So we have here the first thing up there is career adaptation, skills transformation. Most of the things that we are teaching you here today, most of the things that you are doing at your workplace very soon will be taken over by machines, by robots, right? So then if we don't transform, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, we shall find ourselves in this case here being jobless. Great. Then of course we have what we call learning evolution. All of this are geared towards you guys by the time you will become CFOs, 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 Chief Finance Officers, we expect you guys to learn what we call sustainable organizations. Your organizations here must be sustainable. Sustainable organizations are those organizations whose uh, longevity, whose going concern is not under anybody's threat. It's not under anybody's threat. So we are saying a good accountant will always be able to command a premium outside here must be that kind of an accountant who is able to be part of management 
a management that is able to run what we call a sustainable organization, a sustainable organization. If, for example, you are uh, the CFO of an NGO, big NGO, big NGO, and you do not know how to write, uh, for example, uh, grant proposals, grant proposals, then <laughs> your company will uh, run out of funds very soon. Right? So sustainability as a CFO, as a CFO, great CFO, a member of USPAC, who has, of course, uh, quite a lot of knowledge, at the end of the day, you must be part of the cohort that is running a sustainable business. A business in this case here that Corona will not come and knock it out of the way. A business that regardless of the economic situation that we find ourselves in, it will still be there, right? And then ensure that uh, even their revenues uh, at that particular time, hardship time, their revenues are still growing simply because they have got a strong C-suit. You know what they call this C-suit? C-suit, we are looking at uh, the CFO, we are looking at the CEO and the CEO. CEO is the chief operating what here? Officer, chief operating officer. So mostly these guy plays a very important role in terms of what is sustainability sustainability because he's the guy primarily whose biggest responsibility is to put down the internal control systems of a company. If we don't put very effective internal control systems of a, a company, it's a German, then automatically thieves will come in and they'll steal everything. I'm so proud of you guys because I know being accountants, of course, we know what ICS stands for, internal control systems. We know the objectives we know the objectives of internal control systems. You can remember these objectives here. We don't want to talk of what we call a stop. The acronym, objectives of internal control systems. That uh, if a company has got a strong internal control systems, then automatically the financial statements we shall get will be accurate, right? Automatically, ladies and gentlemen, the company's assets will be safeguard, safeguarded. We shall be able to get whatever, like now as auditors, when we ask for a report. Because these guys have a strong internal control systems, then the reports must come to us on a timely basis. We have what we call order. We have what, what we call prevention of what here, prevention of fraud, fraud. So if this person is not so good, if he's a person, is a gentleman who is myopic, who is thinking of their own interests, like today I'm going to get a million shillings, and that then the only way that I'm thinking about of getting a million shillings is to go. Of course, and uh, coordinate with other people in the organization procurement, it is we steal from the company. As a CFO, the moment you make the first step towards stealing anything from your company, at the end of the day, the company will not be sustainable. Because it will not ever reach a time when we'll be able to say you're putting bricks to that corruption, because already your fingers are dirty, right? So if you'd want to command a premium in the market, you must, ladies and gentlemen, get into this profession with a lot of what here integrity 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 now listen and listen to me very well here we are looking at our wheel so this sustainable organization of course we are saying here for us to be able to command great premium in the market we must be the first cog here the first component of you doing very well as an accountant you must be an assurance advocate there are people you know if you appoint them as a here, 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 you know straight away the value of the firm goes way high because they are assurance advocates. They are able to assure the other stakeholders. They are able to assure shareholders and stakeholders of the firm that when you see me around, there is nothing of this company that can ever be stolen. I always stand for truth, like Martin Odor. Martin Odor, in this case, he will get out of this entity today. He gets directorship in another company. Currently, as we speak, he's a director of 20 plus companies, right? Somebody like uh, the, uh, this guy wanted to become governor of Nairobi, Igade, Polika, right? These are guys who are so strong in whatever that they do, right? Keeping a teach, keeping a teach. Julius keeping a teach. I told you, Julius keeping a teach for so long at Visions, at Visions Institute some time back, right? Actually, I remember he was teaching management information systems. This guy rose from a mere teacher, he became a, a director of KWS. And right now he's a director of so many organizations, simply because of selflessness. They're not people who will go and there, put in this case here, their fingers there, on what here, 
or rather they are not people who are so keen on stealing. So if you want to, ladies and gentlemen, you command a big, big premium in the market and ensure that you are an assurance advocate. People know that eh? once we have Albert, once we have Abdullah Juma in this particular company, then this company for sure will do what? Will go up there, right? But of course, you and I know that there are people that uh, if you come and put them as CEO or COO or CFO in a company, one year down the line, you will get like big companies like Kenya Airways, which is supposed to be what here, the pride of Africa, going down on its knees. Mumias, we know them. Once you reach that level, then automatically there is nobody who will be able to uh, will be willing to give you any premium. So we need to be assurance advocates, assurance advocate. That's number one. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at this thing very well, we have what we call sustainability trailblazer. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change is now a reality. If you look around, uh, for instance, for about how many, three, four months, I mean, have we had serious rainfall even in Nairobi here? No. Places like Katiado is total, it's becoming almost a desert now, right? So climate change, things to do with the ozone layer. For these organizations here to be sustainable and, of course, uh, be there in the long term, we need accountants who understand issues to do with sustainability. Issues to do with the environment. And that is why I'm happy nowadays, at least, CPA, ISPAC, and also CASNEP. They have brought in so many modules about what here, yeah, about uh, this sustainability reporting, about integrated reporting. So you will get a student here who is only thinking about number crunching. How do I come up with a profit and loss statement? How do I come up with a statement of financial? They forget that there. Eh? Nowadays, in terms of reporting, ladies and gentlemen, you must report using what we call integrated reporting. Integrated reporting or sustainability reporting. And the sustainability reporting, you must always report to us in terms of the three P's model. In terms of the three P's model. Three P's model. So we have the first P, second P, the third P. Of course, come and mention something to do with profit, right? Come and mention something to do with what your people. You must also tell us in your annual reports, you must speak so loudly in uh, so many pages about what year the planning, the planning. So it's no longer about just money, 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 no. It's about these two qualitative aspects and gentlemen, which may not look so important at the moment, but in the future, if you don't take care of your people very well, your employees very well, then what will happen? Right? If you're not looking at the community, surrounding community, it has got people. You're not offering them jobs. You're not, uh, in this case here, for example, having any CSR to ensure that uh, there are kids around, uh, but like having a, a good primary secondary school, if you're a big organization, right? Then what will happen in the future? Right? Remember, these people are giving you also business. So it's high time we also bring out back some profits here to them. We support them through CSRs. Right? <laughs> right? So then we have the planet. Planet, of course, we expect a good, 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 good company, ladies and gentlemen, should always be thinking about their carbon footprints. And that is why nowadays, if you go for any senior role interview like a CFO in any company, they would want you to demonstrate that you understand the, these models here. Do you understand them? Like they'll ask you under the planet perspective, what are we supposed to be reporting? carbon footprint, how many trees are we planting, what is our carbon emissions, right, right, I mean there is no way you can talk about this without talking about the three R's, three R's, however big your company is, it could be Stanchart, it could be Coca-Cola, it doesn't matter how big we are, we must talk about what you are recycling, if it's papers, reusing, right, those things are, they're small but key, and I'll be able to show you for instance, if you give me a minute, let me just open the annual reports of EABL. Let me open here the annual reports of EABL. EABL annual reports. You get to see what is expected of you outside here as an accountant before I go to technology and I show you technology. That is where we fight with you a little bit because, I mean, you guys are ignoring Excel. You are ignoring uh, doing uh, SAP. You would want to be reporting manually. 
let me produce a report like uh, with the QuickBooks. That's a manual thing. That's too basic. It doesn't have uh, any good uh, power BI, business intelligence being connected to them. You have to do a lot of exporting. You come to Excel, ETC, ETC, but we'll reach there. Ladies and gentlemen, the most important thing you're supposed to appreciate here is the concept of sustainability. Right now, we have to be at a position as accountants to talk about what here, the environment, right? The social, environmental, even governance, governance, governance. We want as a board member, you as a CFO, of course, I tell you that you'll be a board member. When you, are at, when you attend a board, mem a board meeting, you should be able to raise uh, concerns. Say, for example, that uh, how come here the chairman has got a lot of what out of powers? Because chairman's role is supposed to end at the boardroom. At the boardroom. Chairman's role is supposed to end at the boardroom. Chairman's role is to guide this director here to be able to discuss the agenda of the day. From the agenda of the day, those directors here should be able to vote. And of course, the majority of the directors here will be able to do what to carry the day. What we call the rule of what here, force versus habit of majority. It's only in Africa where you'll come and get the chairman having press conferences because we don't know governance. We don't know, in this case here, corporate governance. Right? If you look at, for example, the Ministry of Lands, you will get, in this case here, chairman is the one who's coming to the public. It's so wrong. If you look at IBC, the chairman is, you know, in terms of corporate governance, that is very wrong. That's very wrong. The chairman's role is supposed to end where? At the boardroom. And these are things, ladies and gentlemen, as an accountant, you are supposed to know because you see that is why we are teaching you company law. So that as you are in this case, attending these board meetings, you should be able to see illegality that you bring them up to, right? The moment you reach that level, you know, for example, how minutes are taken, uh, 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 minutes, you don't have to be a CS, but you need to know how should we run this board. If you want the chairman, I need to know, and I should be able to guide. So if it's uh, the secretary, you know, we have agendas. So you, you pick the agenda, you take them, put them in your laptop. As a CFO, you must also write them, very important. Even if you are not uh, having a, 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 a duty of coming up with minutes. So we have the agenda. What was the discussion regarding this? In this case here, what was the result? What is the resolution? What is the resolution? So the result, for example, that the company should be able to raise capital. Right? So raise capital. This is what you would control by the board. Right? Who is to do this? Who is there to champion this? Right? So you are writing here the action points. Right? Dates are very important. Right? So that uh, as you go out of the meeting, you will become fruitful outside there. By the next meeting, already you have the things that especially which uh, are concerning you, which you have been able to pick very well, right? So once you reach uh, this kind of a level, then automatically from my experience, I know you'll be able to command what here, premium outside here. It's about commanding premium. This thing, like I had some uh, friend of mine telling me, me that, uh, well, you know what? Some of you are able to get jobs in multinational companies, ETC, because of connections. All right, that could be one thing. But also, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of, uh, for you to be able to get some of uh, these great jobs here, you also need to be good at whatever you are doing. At whatever you are doing, you must be very good. Nobody will give you, especially in this like UNDP, UN, ETC, Coca-Cola, CFO, nobody can put you there simply because of the network that you have, right? Those are the kind of points that you get simply because of what you are married, married, right? Now here we are. We go back to our wheel. So we are saying here, the first one here is a assurance advocate, sustainability trailblazer, very important. And then as a gentleman, we have the concept of what your business transformer. That if you are an accountant and you'd want in this case here, the market to pay you premiums, you'd want the market to pay you heavily, like what you hear, the CEO of KCB, 12 million shillings a month, 20 million cash shillings a month, those guys are business transformers. They are business transformers. They really know how to work with what we call the balanced scorecard. They know how to work with what we call the balanced scorecard. Remember the balanced scorecard, what do we have? We have the financial perspective here. So we have the financial perspective. We have the customer perspective here. 
customer perspective, customer perspective. We have uh, what we call business processes, internal business processes. And then lastly, we have what we call learning and what here, yeah, learning and growth, learning and growth, learning and growth. So as a CFO, you must be very good in this. Remember as a CFO, you are an all-rounder, right? An all-rounder. So as a CFO, you must know from the financial perspective, you must always strive to raise revenues. You must be part and parcel of that body, if it's marketing team, that is uh, working so tirelessly to increase revenues of the company. You can't say that your work is to go and sit somewhere, dancing around, right? Swinging in comfy chairs, as others are looking for revenues and then your work will be to account for that revenue. No, a CFO who will ultimately rise to CEO level must be very good in terms of that, coming up with strategies of increasing revenue. It must be good as a team player, especially when you are dealing with marketers, very important. Unfortunately, most accountants are minimalists. We always keep on talking of cost minimization. So when we get to a marketer's uh, meeting, and the marketers are saying that for the next one month, we shall be having two pages of a, on the daily nation to advertise this and this. The first question you ask yourself is how much does that cost us? Two million per day. So four days, eight million. Most accountants will say no without looking at the other side of the coin, without trying to interrogate these figures. For me, I'll be looking at the return on investment. What, what will be the reach when we spend these eight million uh, pensions? What will be the reach outside there? How will our revenues increase? increase? Have we ever had this kind of campaigns before? Right? Is there any time we have ever put into marketing like eight million? I mean, if you look at great companies that are doing very well, like Safaricom, look at how much they're investing in bill billboards. The biggest billboards right now belong to them. If you look at companies like, for example, EFBL, I mean, they are so good also in terms of billboards, in terms of TV adverts, and they exactly know who they are targeting, right? So we must be good in terms of what year, revenue maximization. And remember, even if I've said you, you don't have to be minimalist really, we will only be in the current cost that we think will be able to generate something for the company. So cost control is a key thing. Good accountants, ladies and gentlemen, that I know outside here, I normally visit, I've taught so many people, and I normally visit them. Good accountants that I know outside here, they are so good in terms of uh, working with budgets, right? So they have what you call the budget votes. So in this case, you have come up with uh, something making a request. This person here using the SAP, the FICO module. This person here straight down will look at uh, what is the budget line for this item, like that, right? So that you have to keep on tracking this expense that they are being in card, right? So that we don't exceed the budget amount. And even the ones that we're giving you, we must always be having our fingers on them in terms of what benefit are we getting. We must always look at the benefit. What is the return on investment? What is the ROE? It is your budget, actual your computing variances. We are looking at that, the controls. These monies are not getting lost, right? The company's uh, network is, grow, is growing, etc., etc., etc. So cost control through budgetary system. And then we have the customer perspective. A good accountant, and a gentleman that I know, will always know that a good organization here should be able to acquire customers every day. So customer acquisition. After you acquire customers, you must ensure that they are satisfied. And that is why you realize that most of these CFOs, most of the CEOs, they are very big in terms of monkey surveys. Monkey surveys, those anonymous surveys where you send, in this case, through online, you send things, uh, uh, questionnaires, uh, to your consumers, right? And then they give you feedback. And please, when this feedback comes, if you are a CFO, what they are sold, it has to be analyzed. It has to be analyzed. And then, of course, we have satisfaction. How satisfied are they? Then we have loyalty. You must be part and parcel of that team that uh, comes up with a loyalty program for consumers. So, like, for example, as an RCM online college on uh, this note, we need to come up with a, a policy such that, for example, if you have been with us online throughout, on, with us online, studying with us online, from say the foundation level to the advanced level, we should have like one paper, one paper which you can do for free as a, some kind of a bonus for you for being loyal with us. 
You should have one paper, one paper. I don't know whether that paper should be the business and data analytics, but anyway, we need as accountants, we need to be good at this. If you look at, for example, most of these firms from the UK, like Safaricom, they have, of course, uh, uh, some strings uh, with the uh, UK investors. They have very good loyalty programs, the bonga points, ETC, ETC, ETC. And then we have what we call awareness. Awareness is all about what your publicity. Now, from there, we come to business processes. So, of course, on the business processes, a good CFO will be right at the middle of discussions to do with what year auto automation. How do we automate all our processes? Automation is the major thing. The other day I was reading, uh, if you look at, for example, a country like uh, India, India has got about 300 million voters. And these people are able to conduct uh, their voting uh, elections in a day, right? And everything in this case, you will never hear people quarreling there, right? It's because of what here? Automa automation. Automation. So automation is key. You must always, ladies and gentlemen, be quite a good with this. Now, this brings me to these accountants who are still using manual systems. The manual system here to do what here to for financial reporting. You need to keep on growing. You started manually. Now move to a level where you tell your employer no. Now we need to come up with what we call what here, QuickBooks online. Right, QuickBooks online, even give directors access from wherever they are. They should be able to see how you are punching in the receivables, how you're punching in whatever is receiving payables, or rather receiving that money from the receivables, etc, 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 like that. They should be able to see how you're creating account, type of account from wherever you are, right? Because we want a tool that is able to give us a results on a timely basis. After some time, you realize that now your revenues are growing, etc. We want you to come up with a system like an ERP, an ERP which is able to connect many functions of an entity into one platform, right? And these are things that I expect you guys to be studying yeah, towards ERP, the SAPs, ETC, ETC. Then of course we are planning and what year? Yeah, no, you guys do not have any problem because you are always in classes studying uh, in light of what customer broadcast member is for. Is for calls, continuous professional development. That uh, it doesn't end with you guys getting CPK. You need to own these skills every every day, every day like that. Now we go back to the wheel as we come to the end. We should be coming to the end of this in the next uh, ten minutes. So we have to be business transformers, business transformation. Like right now, if you're an accountant of an entity and you have not really taken them to market their products uh, online through Facebook, Instagram, through TikTok. You are not doing very well as an accountant. You are not a transformer. You're not a transformer, right? Then we have here the data navigator, the data navigator. A good, good accountant, ladies and gentlemen, must be a data analyst in their organization. Data analyst, data analyst, right? So you should be able to pick, for example, data from whatever source document you are given, right? You come and condense this data, for example, using, if it's like the pivot table, out of pivot table, I should be able to get my business intelligence ratios, right? Where, for example, I do benchmarking. I'm looking at RCM online college in terms of, for example, my revenues, growth in revenues by the Stratmo, right? That's business intelligence, right? Because I have to do a lot of benchmarking internal between departments of the organization, externally, right? I have to do a lot of benchmarking. So I'm using Power BI, right? So I must be very good with Excel. If you're an accountant and you're not very good in Excel, then straight away know that uh, in the next two, three, four years, you may not be having a good job. You may not be having a good job. Why? Because most of this number crunching you're doing debit credit, already it has been taken by water by machines. If I get just somebody who is a, a data entry clerk, an ATD graduate, tell this ATD graduate, but whenever you see this expense transaction, just enter here. Create. These people will be able to create those things in QuickBooks, and QuickBooks will be able to give me one here, final reports. So it is how now I interpret the final reports 
that will matter. Am I able, for example, looking at the cost of last year, say on a monthly basis, can I take those expenses of last year on a monthly basis, I compare them with the expenses of uh, this year on a monthly basis by drawing budgets. So that uh, as I present this information, at least people should be able to see the graphs, the bars, right? The pie chart, right? right? So data analytics is a, a big, big, big thing. Big, big thing. If you want to command a premium outside there, you must be big in terms of helping your organization interpret what here, yeah, interpret data, interpret data, interpret data, right? So I want to take you through one example, one example in Excel, in Excel. And you see in Excel, as an accountant, what you are required here to understand quickly, as fast as possible, the tool that is mostly applicable outside here for accountants in Excel that you're supposed to be very good at is what we call the VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP, I mean, VLOOKUP to me, VLOOKUP is like heaven to me. VLOOKUP is like heaven to me. Because VLOOKUP, you use VLOOKUP to compare documents, you use VLOOKUP to calculate, uh, to even develop financial statements. You use VLOOKUP to do such very, very, many things. VLOOKUP. So if I were you, and straight away get to know how the lookup function works. That's very important, right? And then number two, we have what we call the pivot tables. The pivot tables. The pivot tables. The pivot what here? Yeah, pivot tables. The pivot tables. Right? Right? So we want to take like uh, five minutes to show you how this thing works. How this thing works. If you have time, please you bear with me so that I can take you through how does the view look up work? How do we work with these pivot tables? That is very, very important for you. Of course, as an accountant, you need so many things in Excel, but I will take these to be the primary ones. I know there are other things, for example, like that, what we call concatenate, how to concatenate data, very important concatenation, right? Right? I know you will still need what we call the index match. Index match. I know you will need a very important also tool called the sum product as an accountant in Excel. In Excel, Excel is marvelous. And these are things I need to be practicing every day, every day, every day. I need to be doing Excel. So I've always called upon you and I've trained like last, last uh, for the last two months, you've trained about 300, 300 students. These concepts of what year? Excel, Excel. Right, I'll be giving you offers here so you can come and study Excel with us here. Once you understand Excel like the way I understand Excel myself, trust you me. Outside here, you'll be getting uh, what we call head hunt. People will be hard hunting for you. People will be hunting for you. Yeah, right. You'll always get when you open your email, you've seen your LinkedIn, and we're interested in this and this and this and this. Right, right. Now, as a gentleman, these are key. I'll be able to show you how they work. But now, most importantly, as I disappear, because now I have to disappear, you know, when you are doing this accounting, must you be employed? No. Actually, in most cases, most of us end up in business. We end up doing business, right? So in business, ladies and gentlemen, please listen and listen to me very well. What kind of businesses can you run as an accountant? Of course, the biggest of them all is the tax what here, yeah, tax advisory, tax advisory, tax advisory. So under tax advisory, you know what you need to do is to set up a small office. It can even be a virtual office. I mean, I've seen people doing this from even home. The only thing that you need to be so good at for you to be able to get a premium from the market, number one, you must be good in marketing yourself very good in marketing yourself. You must be very good in marketing yourself. How do you market yourself? In social media, in social media, Facebook, etc, etc. And remember, this is what? This is a professional service you're offering. So you can't go to Facebook and then you start saying that, you know what? My name is so-and-so and I'm the best. No, this part cannot entertain that. We would love it, ladies and gentlemen, if you go to these social media handles and you blog information, you're blogging information, you're giving information to the public. 
So for example, you go and say, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, today is on the ninth, ninth of the month. You can even ask them a question. In matters of KRA, what should be done on the ninth? Right? Of course, on the ninth, people should be remitting, remitting what you have, pay. Right? Go ahead and tell them that if you don't uh, remit your pay, you don't do, you don't file your, your pay returns if it's on the ninth, these are the repercussions. And then down there, you'll be able to say straight away, you ask faithfully, you ask faithfully, I'm on Pretorek. CPA, I'm on Pretorek. I remember one day I was at uh, uh which club is this? Which club is this? Kenya, 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 United Club. Kenya United Club. United Kenya Club near University of Nairobi, yes. Now I met some old Muzungu there. This old Muzungu told me, you know what, if he was young, if he was a bit younger, he would not have even thought of investing in buildings or whatever. He would have invested in social media heavily. I never understood uh, what that guy was saying. Two, three years down the line, I was following him on Twitter, what is that? And then I started realizing that he was getting a lot of attraction. I mean, he could write like a few characters and so many people could uh, respond, right? So I tried reaching out to him, we spoke. He told me since I started doing this, the kind of, uh, I mean, how I'm able to direct my people, right? To come and consume my product is uh, in a very big way, right? And I borrowed the cue from this guy. That is why I'm also very big in terms of what he had, Facebook. Right? I doubt whether there is any college in this town which advertises like me on Facebook, right? On WhatsApp, right? And you see these things are quite quick, right? Like I called this meeting that today at about 10, and you can see here I have about 60 people, right? So this thing I could say about the Facebook ni our thought was ways. Jua unafanya makosa sana. We must be in this thing because it is the era of those things. The only thing I don't uh, do, Leave it up, pick a picture, and a bigger picture, even right now. No problem. It's a social media uh, platform. Not a bigger picture. Like, you know, a picture, and I'm the same, huh? your CPA is here to serve you. Because social media is a marketplace, big market. There's nobody who goes to social media to advertise who becomes poor. Trust you me. Trust you me. We say here social media, like on TikTok. We say, we're going to do a minute. We're TikTok just within a minute. Tell people why it is important for them, for example, when they are inheriting properties to ensure that everything is all right. Like I know of somebody the other day, Alipatiwa, Babaka Mempatia property. Kamambia, Ili Ako Ili. Mze Alikuwa alive that time. Akuenda kufuatilia, akuenda kufuatilia. Badaya kati mze Amelala, kuenda kucheck the rates because now he wanted the, the transfer to be done. Kucheck the rates at the city council. Kusu two million plus, right? So there are people who want this information, right? Right? See, at the point when you can have property, somebody may put an aquambia and aquambia manual to allow, right? Uh, Nicola Yumba and Daka Kuzia, Oceans of Pandica sale agreement at Aona Wakili, sale agreement, Ranza Arabra Mambia Shikato Kwanza Yandre Powder, who can have a better cut of the Kuna, Kunata Kavia, Yakusemi Shamba Yuzwa, spouse and Neka Kavia. So these are the kind of things that you can get outside there and blog and you become what here, the rich, right? So you don't have to be employed, although normally I talk of employment, I, I've been both for so long, but nowadays I've also come to appreciate the benefit of being employed, especially if you're getting employed with a big farm where you have some good salary, employment has also its major, major benefits. Employment has, is also good. But if you are, uh, if possible, do both, do both. But when you go here and show that you are big in terms of what you are, social media. Great. So where are we? In our wheel as we finish, we have spoken about this digital playmaker. We must be good in terms of these digital social media handles, ETC. All right? All right? Now, the gentlemen, when you look at this, they are telling us as accountants, we must have a vision. Visionary accountants, always trying to think about how do we make ourselves better? How do we better our organizations, right? Ukiwa ni accountant, I wouldn't have to kwa club on a kunyo, see ba kunyo like me, wouldn't send a kwa club on a kunyo like Saturday or Saturday. We must be visionary, right? Emotional intelligence is very, very important. How do we handle? 
How do we handle? How do we handle our colleagues at the workplace? Are we respectful? Right? Right? I'm going to email you can require email when it's quite three, four days of the Jibu. No, I knowing very well that uh, that there are a number of people who are depending on uh, your response. All right. We must be very creative. We must be technical. We must be uh, competent. And we must be ethical. Right. We must seek experience by working with people who are experienced. Like myself. You know, I never practiced accountancy for so long. Myself, for many years, I was a teacher until I got a job at a a company where I'm in charge of what year? Accountants, young people from PwC who are very bright, right? And here I am, needed to understand the entire financial report. I mean, I had to surround myself with people who have been in this industry for so long. And I was able to understand that thing in a way that you can't even know that uh, I started practicing financial reporting the other day. So if you talk of IFRS 2, IFRS 2, if you talk, that's share-based uh, uh, share payment. If you talk of IFRS 10, talk of any IFRSs, I know group accounting, I know even the IS41, ETC. Knowing it deeply, deeply, because we serve very big companies like we have Sony. Sony, Sony is one of our biggest companies, which has got what year? 500 plus subsidiaries. We are offering them IFRS, IFRS what year? Consultancies. The same in Kenya, we, we, we support so many companies, including Equity Bank, it's one of our clients, EABL, Sustaining ETC. The concept is that you must stand with the people who are experienced for you to be able to do what you have to appreciate some of these things. All right, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, because of time, and I know some of you have classes in the afternoon, I would want to relax there a little bit and uh, take questions from you. But as we finish here, skills transformation is key. Career adaptation. And then, of course, we have learning. But you must think of changing your mode of learning. There is no way you will keep on studying in a physical college. You're going to a college where you're confined within walls, and then you expect to serve big, big companies. That cannot happen. Right? Right? Like myself, I report to my boss that in Sweden. I work from home most of the times. Right, so I need to be very good in terms of these teleconferencing uh, tools. I know how to share my screen. I know how to do this. How do you get to know that if you're not learning through Zoom, you're not learning through Teams? So you must, ladies and gentlemen, in this case, accept a reality that right now we are in a digital age, and you must also embrace technology in whatever that you do, including studying, including studying, including studying. Including studying. Thanks, Liz. Great. Including studying. So I shall continue offering this uh, particular kind of uh, mentorship uh, programs uh, over weekends, over weekends, over weekends. And uh, of course, uh, if you would wish to study with us, whichever course, be it uh, Excel, we are thinking of introducing SAP soon, right? I'm very good in SAP, right? CPA is online. Please get in touch with us. Get in touch with us. 0719 525,000. 0719 This is the school number. You will be able to get the best of trained students from the beginning. From the beginning. I've trained students here from the beginning. From the beginning, uh, that is from ATD to CPA. Okay. Purely online. I don't teach in, in any college physical nowadays. No. There are no returns there. Now somebody is asking a very good question between private sector and uh, public sector. Which one is better? I will go for private sector. If you get a very big organization, multinational, or one of these big four auditing firms, in terms of skills, private sector is very good. Also, public sector, there are uh, some parastatals that are coming up very fast in terms of uh, you getting good experience, but some jobs in uh, the public sector, why I don't like them, although I know there's money in public sector, you'll still get people getting half a million a month. One thing I don't like about public sector, you may go there and automatically get into a routine where your work is only to account for something small, then you work into, and then at the end of the day, you end up really not knowing much. I would like, like the firm that I work for. Right now, when you talk over transfer pricing, in terms of what year, tax minimization, legal, legally. 
If you talk about that, I've already done a lot of consultancies on that. So I keep on learning new things every other day. That is the advantage of what you are, private sector. Although public sector, I'm not writing you off. I'm also aware that they are, like if you go to central bank, I'm so sure you'll be able to get good experience in terms of risk management, risk management, what year risk management, risk management, uh, hedging techniques. How do you hedge against a, a poll in Kenya shilling? How, but uh, of course I know most about 70% of uh, some jobs in the government. You get like a very big person in the government just doing invoicing. They really don't provide a very good career path for people. That's an unfortunate thing. But I, I'm not writing it off. Look at this. I'm leaving out about 30%, I think, should be good, should be necessary. You also engage in financial reporting. Although you can't do end to end, you can't do end to end. Uh, if you're finished CPA without practical exposure, I would recommend that uh, try as much as possible to volunteer. Just get into an auditing firm, volunteer. Be able to know how to generate working papers, right? How do you draw conclusions from this and this? Just volunteer. Try to volunteer. Try to volunteer. So I'm now here to take your questions.